And our second main topic today gets submitted to us by David Hoffman, who writes, Hey, John and Rob, according to Deadline, the next Kelvin Star Trek movie will be helped by WandaVision director Matt Shackman. Looking forward to this choice, especially after the great work he turned in for Marvel, for Marvel on WandaVision. What are your thoughts? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And listen. I'm going to be honest with you. Rob, you and I differ on the state of Star Trek today. Um, Mm -hmm. I actually quite enjoy the Star Trek stuff we've got going on. You do not. I think both you and I probably are very reflective of certain chunks of the viewing audience out there. But I, as somebody who does, you know, I like Discovery. I like J.J. Abrams, uh, especially the last one. I like J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movies. I like Picard, all that kind of stuff. But even as somebody who has liked this stuff, I've got to say I am losing great interest from the number of director announcements we've had regarding a new Star Trek movie that seems to come and go. I mean, obviously there was a lot, I mean, I don't blame Paramount for this, but there was a lot of hoopla going on around that Quentin Tarantino might direct one. Cause he, you know, this things that Quentin Tarantino said about, he hadn't, he and JJ talked about a script idea that kind of came and went. And then there was, I can't remember who it was. There was a female director who was brought on board And then I haven't really heard anything come of that since. And then now we've got Matt Shackman. Now, let's talk about that specifically just for a second. The idea of Matt Shackman directing a Star Trek movie is fantastic. I mean, it's fantastic. What he did on WandaVision was amazing, and it got them a lot of awards consideration. As a matter of fact, the folks over at Variety write this. From the Marvel Cinematic Universe to the Final Frontier. WandaVision director Matt Shackman has been tapped by Paramount Pictures and Bad Robot to direct the next Star Trek feature film from a screenplay by Lindsay Beer from Sierra Burgess is a Loser and Geneva Robertson from Captain Marvel. J.J. Abrams is set to produce. The cast, however, remains unclear. Shackman earned an Emmy nomination for helming the inaugural Marvel Studios TV series, one of 23, 23 Emmy nominations. The show that he executive produced and directed got... One of 23 nods the Disney Plus series earned, including for Best Limited Series, a prolific television director, Matt Shackman, has directed shows including Six Feet Under, House, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Game of Thrones, and one of the hottest shows right now out there, Succession. That, of course, comes to us from the folks at Variety. And by the way, our friend uh, Victor Barrera sends in a Super Chat badge. Thank you, Victor. Um, You know, Rob, as somebody who does like Star Trek as it is, I, I got to say, I have been losing a lot of steam as far as the movie side goes, because again, the, the coming, going, the directors, they don't seem to know what it is they're doing. But I got to say, I loved what this guy did, Rob, on WandaVision. I loved what he did on WandaVision. And it's not just the story of WandaVision. I mean, I love the way it was directed. I really did. And then you go over his resume and stuff like this. I think this bodes pretty well. I mean, listen. I know there's probably no news that could have came out about whoever was directing this movie that would have probably made you excited about it. But I mean, come on, this is actually pretty good news, but you hate it. Tell us why. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm being a little first of all, there. First of all, once again, this is just like every other announcement they've made for these Star Trek movies over the last couple of years. Look, I was looking forward to seeing what Noah Hawley was going to do with the Star yeah, Trek movie. Yeah, yeah. I really like what he did with Legion. One of these writers, Lindsay Beer, has had one thing produced you know sarah burgess is a loser she's got a lot of upcoming projects and scripts here and there i really think the way that the star trek franchise has been treated at least from the feature film perspective has been pretty well slipshod maybe the word i'm thinking of but it hasn't been handled well all of these announcements it feels like every announcement they're making is a bad robots desperate ploy to keep control of this franchise i mean they've moved on to warner brothers i don't even understand why paramount still lets them develop they still probably have something going on contractually and it's almost like well we've got to fulfill our contractual obligations to get a movie out there or we're going to lose the franchise and i love shackman as a director i i really do and i really like what he did with wandavision but you know both of the writers that are tapped to write this script don't they don't instill in me great confidence. And that's not to say they can't write a great script, but you know, I would love to see 
I don't know, an A-list screenwriter take a shot at, at Star Trek. And I, I, I just feel that it's like they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink up against the wall to see what sticks. Maybe this movie will get made. They don't announce anything about what it's about. They don't announce the cast. It's well, it's just, way too early like, for that. It's way too early for that. Well, I mean, they have a script. You know, they it, they would know if they've got if the movie has been written by these people. They know what the story is about. Is it about the cast that we've already seen? Is it about a new cast? Is it a reinvention of the franchise? I mean, I I don't think any franchise has been treated as shoddily as Star Trek has been over the last. And people are like, well, Rob, there's lower decks, there's strange new worlds. Have any of them made real inroads into pop culture? Have they been zeitgeist shows that we're talking about? Star Trek should be the pinnacle of science fiction, both on television and in the in the theaters. And is it? So uh, I, I, you know, you and I could argue all day about this. I, I, I know, but I mean, I, I mean, in terms of it, but, but but your whole the whole bar you're trying to set, it should be the best thing ever. It should be the best thing in the world. But like Discovery. Like, let's put it this way. I know a number of people that have never been into Star Trek that mm -hmm. Star Trek Discovery got them into. You know, sure. I am a fan Me of Star too. Trek. I've, I've really enjoyed it, stuff like that. I I just think, look, I agree with you that, like, the ins and outs of how this movie has come together reminds me of The Flash and, and, and all the drama The Flash yeah. has had going on. And that that's concerning. But, I mean, come on, man. Even on a day... Where a, where a director like Matt gets attached, you can't you can't muster up a little bit of enthusiasm for this. No, because I think the production. I love giving Rob a hard time about this stuff. No, the production <laughs> company behind it has proven how many announcements are they going to make for their projects that haven't gotten made, beginning with Quentin Tarantino to our first female Star Trek director to Noah Hawley to now Matt Shackman. I mean, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Or this is what their fourth or fifth time. Uh, there, I, it doesn't give me any, it, it, to me, it shows that there's no vision behind the Star Trek franchise. And what we need desperately is a Kevin Feige. We need a visionary, like they, who's producing this movie. It doesn't even say that JJ J. Abrams is, it just says bad robot. Where's the producer that's going to, where's the Jerry Bruckheimer? Dude, I got you, know, I feel like you're making up stuff to complain about because tons of movie announcements get made and they don't give you all the details of the plot and who the producers are. This app, this is standard regular stuff. I feel like you're, you're kind of reaching for something but, to complain but, but John, about here. John, I, that might be true if this was the first announcement, but this is like the fourth announcement. Oh, I, I listen. I agree with you on that, but th this is again. I was. I'm still frustrated about how many things have gone through. But now they're saying, okay, now this is our project we're doing, and it may fall through again. But this is still the first announcement of this particular project. Like it's not the Quentin sure, Tarantino thing. Sure, and it is, but it shows a lack of leadership at the top, because there should be a visionary producer who knows exactly what they want, is in totally in simpatico with Emma Watts at Paramount, who has made Star Trek a priority. And I, and I just feel that I it feels very nebulous, like they still don't know what they're doing and they don't have a guiding hand behind it other than the production company that's made the last three Star Trek movies that cost too much money and didn't return enough in terms of box office. And that's, I, 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 I have no faith in, in this franchise right now. And I, I want to, it's my favorite franchise of all. And yet I feel like we're still being treated. We're, how am I supposed to muster up the, uh, any enthusiasm for this? Well, I mean, I, want I, to. I look at it differently than you. Like I, like for instance, for, again, for me, the television projects have worked. I love Picard. I enjoy, I mean, there, there are a few things about discovery. I don't like, but overall, despite the fact that I crapped on it for two years before it ever came out, I really enjoy discovery and look, this is a situation where if they tried to pursue a Quentin Tarantino thing and they were just realizing this isn't going to work, I'd rather them scrap it than force it through. If they sure. were working on something with Nola Hawley and then they go, well, you know what? This We don't think this is going to work. I would rather them scrap it. I agree with you that this is a little bit reminiscent of how Kathleen Kennedy kind of botched her, her first number of years at Star Wars that she could just not get on the right page and on the same page with the filmmakers that she was picking. And that was an endless source of frustration for me. It's like, come on, your job is to be on the same page with these directors, figure that out before you announce them as being directors. And, and I think that is a frustrating thing about this current thing. But, you know, at the same time, 
you balance that out with, listen, if you don't have the right story, don't do it and wait until you get somebody on board who is the right fit for it. And maybe it'll be Matt, maybe it won't. But again, it's not like they've cracked out you know, a, a Star Trek movie every year for the past five years out of desperation. Thank God. Right. <laughs> so, I don't know. I remain optimistic. You remain pessimistic. But we all want something good out of this. The question is for you guys. What do you think about the addition of Matt Shackman being here? He's right on the heels of getting 23 Emmy nominations for his series that he executive produced and directed in WandaVision. He's got not a lot of feature film experience, but a ton of AAA television experience. How do you guys feel about it? Is it enough to overcome the kind of eye rolling that we've all had about how many times they've gone through directors in this project so far? Is it really exciting? How do you guys feel about it? Jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.